This is a Rogue Media Network podcast. Frozen, Frozen, heroes, gonna tell you about Frozen, Frozen, heroes, gonna tell you about comic books, costumes, facts, boots, and other stuff. In this week's issue, Wonder Woman and Tasmanian Devil. Welcome into Bros, Foes, and Heroes. I'm Zach, joined as always by the marvelous one, Mr. Mike. Hello! Uh, It's always so energetic, and I love it because... We're going to do nothing but grind you down for the... No, I'm kidding. That's wonderful. Um, I had Grinds so much down. fun. Well, that's, that's what we do. Site. Yeah. Uh, maybe we can talk about that later. Sure. But <laughs> when in we, when our, we in our quiet about time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I had so much fun last week um, with the whole Batman, yeah, Elmer Fudd thing. I liked it a lot. Uh, which was, uh, I thought, a real fun crossover. And yeah. doing more research. Or even looking back into there, I know that there were a lot more issues that they did like that. So I went through and I found another one that I just thought was kind of random. Yeah. Which um, all of them, I guess, when you think of it, kind of are. Sure. But uh, all came out in like 2017, 2018. And the pairings were we saw or we covered Batman and Elmer Fudd last yeah. week. But they also did uh, Porky Pig and Lex Luthor. Oh, wow. uh, Daffy and Joker. Lobo Ooh. and Roadrunner. Da- Daffy and Joker. See, I have it, and yeah. I just looked at it, and it didn't look like I thought it would. Um, I still would this like is, to see it. Yeah, no, no, no. I can, I, I'll you bring, can bring it with it, us. I would love to see it. Yeah, that. no, I yeah. can bring it with yeah. me still. So, uh, and this is, so you said 2017? 2017, 2018. So this is when about the out. time that Warner Brothers took over DC? I mean, I mean they've, had, they've had DC they had for a while. Long time. Yeah, I mean, yeah, okay. and it's just one of those things where I guess you try to just, you know. Well, I mean, you put out one of them, and it makes sense, you know, to just yeah, keep doing it. Yeah, I think there's like 10. There's a, what is, uh, there's a, oh, uh, 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 Martian Manhunter and Marvin Martian. Oh, uh, wonderful. Um, and then there's one with Sylvester and That's Tweed. like a no-brainer, you know. I don't know. I'll have to, those two together. But still, the one that I found that I thought we would focus on today, um, and I have a little bit of, uh, not house cleaning, but something to look forward to that I want to tease a bit before we Mm. get into today's. But uh, I found Wonder Woman and the Tasmanian Devil. Because if you thought of any two pairings that would go together. That's it. Yeah. That's what I would do. But uh, the story is actually. See, I would think Lobo would go better with this. Kind of. It it makes sense, at least kind of Mm -hmm. aesthetically. I don't know looking at them. But uh, Mm. still, very interesting take. And we'll get into that. But something that I've been thinking about since last week's show, Mike. Yeah. Um, a dangerous pastime, I know. Just me thinking. In yeah, sure. Uh, but Same here. I talked about uh, something that was very near and dear to me. Yeah, and what's that? that was uh, Mr. Miracle. Uh, I, yeah. I think we... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you talked about Mr. Miracle. <laughs> I don't know much about it. No, 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 no. I know there's a movie coming. Is there? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't they've, know that. they've been talking about the Mr. Miracle movie, um, but I don't. But I think it's like twenty twenty six or something. There's a bunch of I don't know. There's oh, so really? many. I, oh, still, maybe. Uh, here we he DC or Marvel. Uh, he's DC. Okay. Here's so here's comic book nerd time that is Let's just go. gonna sound like just gibberish to some people. I think if you're listening to this, that's true. You probably you're very give a niche shit at this comics. point. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and we appreciate all oh, of you, yes. especially Jeff, who's been with us. Jeff, forever. thank you for your ink stained little hands. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I have like a smoker's laugh today for some reason. Uh but anyway, uh Shazam. You are you familiar with Shazam? Yeah, absolutely. Uh back in the day was I a think character he goes, Shazam. He does. He was known as uh Mr. Marvel. Oh, okay. Oh, that's right. That's right, that's right. To, yeah, 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 there was yeah, a bunch yeah, of renaming yeah. things, now it's Shazam, all of that. Well, over in the UK, oh. since they couldn't name him Mr. Marvel over uh-huh. there as well. Uh-huh. They named him to keep the M in the insignia for when they were reprinting stories. Mm-hmm. They named him Miracle Man. Okay. So there's a UK version of this same character that's Miracle Man, but in the 80s. He parts the waters. He, you know, well, like no, that. no. It's the same essentially oh, okay. Shazam character and everything. Oh, okay. Just a different name How than weird. Billy Batson. Yeah. And instead of being called Shazam it's, or Mr. It's Miracle, still Billy it's Batson? Miracle Man. No, 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 no. They changed. Oh, I can't remember. Okay. 
it's been a while since I've read Bats it. Bats and Billy. No, but sure. I mean, it, name it's changes, but like yeah. the, in the idea of it's the same. But then in the 80s, yeah. uh, they have a book over there. I call it, or a, you know, magazine, they have comic a book series. In they England? do. That I didn't mean it like that. <laughs> they but that called one book. 80, uh, <laughs> 2080, uh, that has um, Judge Dredd is from yeah. that and things yeah. like that. Yeah. They would do reprints of these and then eventually. A little writer by the name of Alan Moore oh, wow. started to like write new stories for the character yeah. back in the eighties, around the same time he was doing V for Vendetta. Right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. V yeah. for Vendetta, stuff like that. And it just kind of cook took off. So Mr. Miracle is a completely different character that is owned by Marvel now. Yeah. But it's all weird. But so you know, um Watchmen. The movie Miracle Man. I think I said Mr. Miracle. See, it's it's yeah. very confusing. The movie is cool, um, but it's very long and it's got some really dry spots in it, and then mm-hmm. it ends differently from the the graphic novel. Yes, but I will tell you that uh, that TV show was really. Oh good. my gosh, that was good. Can we? I know this isn't necessarily that and the boys. To, I mean, those are the two oh, best hero shows. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm with you there too, and I think it's just because of the ridiculousness of the mm-hmm. boys. Uh, I will. Well, they buy into the over the topness oh, yeah. of it. Yeah, but at this point, I think the show is a lot better than the comic book. Oh is. yeah, yeah. Um, or was just because, and no disrespect to Garth Ennis, who also had a preacher that got turned mm-hmm. into a TV yeah. show, and yeah, that he's, was he's had a bunch of other wonderful. stuff. Yeah. Well, yeah, but I mean, you know, so a uh, prolific comic yeah. book writer yeah. in his own right. But I just think that they are able to dive into so much more in the TV show, sure, and be able to like you know compare it to things going on in the well, yeah, you can and drag it out so, too. Yeah. yeah, so it's really cool there. But that's always obviously it's two completely different mediums. Anyway, all of this rambling just to say that uh, I wanted to talk about and actually go over Mister Miracle, yeah. but then the more I started thinking about why, and I'm specifically talking about. The 2017 uh, Tom King Mitch Gerard series that was 13 issues. Mm-hmm. That's you know all together one complete story. Uh, Mr. Miracle has never been that big of a character. It's a Jack Kirby creation from mm-hmm. after he left Marvel and went to DC. Oh, okay. It only lasted like I think 18 issues back when he did it, and then they revamped yeah. it in the you know, maybe the late 80s for six issues, and the mm-hmm. 90s for a little bit for 12. We covered him. You do know a little bit about Mr. Miracle. Just because he is involved uh, in one of the worst comic book stories, or it was just bad, and we've already went over it, um, where that sleazy guy tried to make Superman have sex with his wife. Oh, yeah. 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 That's the 80s. So, yeah, sure. uh, but uh, aside sense. from that, the series that uh, Tom King and Mitch Gerard did that in was 27. Mr. Miracle? Yeah, that's Mr. Miracle. Big Barda's his wife. Oh, like, okay. Yeah. Um, Big this, Barda. Yeah, not That's necessarily the goofiest name. It is, but see, there's so many things to this, and there's so much. But so is Mister Miracle. That's a pretty yeah, goofy name too. It is. So. But uh, all of that to be said is the reason that I think the book is so good on so many levels is just how much history that they kind of wink and nod at when it comes to the uh, creation of the character as a whole, and how the comic actually, in a lot of ways parallels things like the relationship between Jack Kirby and Stan Lee mm. and just the creation process of everything. Yeah, that's and cool. it hits on so many levels. So I think that the only way to actually, I'm going super, I, I realize that this is very You're dense good. of me, You're good. Uh, super comic book nerd on it. And I think that the best way to do this is to, well, this is a podcast and you know, people in the podcast world hate super stories. Oh, I know, boy, but this is going to be a, I think what we will do is focus on something I've wanted to talk about for a long time. Yeah. And it's because of my absolute love and admiration for Jack Kirby and just how, uh, in a lot of ways, I feel like he was screwed out of a lot of credit mm-hmm. that he deserved. Mm-hmm. Uh, also look at how maybe, um, I don't want to say that Stan Lee was necessarily a bad man, but a great character that has things that, but I, I don't want to take anything away yeah. from him because he also yeah. was a very good guy. No, he's great. He's, 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 but that's the thing is there's so many levels to the real world story that mm-hmm. then find their way into this, that I think it's just really cool to look at and go over. So, uh, I have a lot of stuff that I kind of want to plan to towel together. I think so for- this may be a couple week type thing but yeah, i think this no, is gonna great. be a lot of it's fun. great i think for stan lee you know he was in the right place at the right time and he's he's you know he's a ginsu knife salesman kind of guy you know i mean he's gonna take it and run with it and true i've i've heard people I don't really blame him no that's and that's yeah. the thing too is he yeah. always wanted 
all the books I've read and stuff like that. And is not he, everybody gets along with each other. Yeah, that's true too. As much as you want people yeah. to, yeah, and like that's part of the problem. Like, I'll just like get into it a little bit. Is it depends on who you ask. It all comes sure. down to the creation of certain characters or who had a hand in what. Absolutely. And Jack Kirby feeling like he never got credit for anything that it was all given to Stan when in his mind, you know, I think that I've seen a quote from, I can't remember if it was Lynn Wayne or somebody, a Marv Wolfman, somebody who worked there at Marvel at the time that the Marv Wolfman, great name. Very there, nice. There's, there's great comic book names, but I, I can't remember who it is. I don't want to misquote, but said that he was there one day when essentially Stan Lee just told Jack Kirby, Hey, I want to do a Fantastic Four story where the or where they meet God. That's all he told them. Oh wow! And Stan Kirby came, or Stan Kirby, and Jack Kirby came back next to pitch it and had the entire Galactus Silver Surfer thing laid out there. Oh, okay. So that's where that came from. Yeah. Oh right? wow! But like, oh. and what he would do a lot of times is not only would they just have these talks of where, you know, Stan would be like, "Hey, I'm thinking this and this and this," yeah. and Jack's just listening, yeah. and he'd go home and either draw everything like yeah. Stan said. Or throw his own thing in there. Sure. He would even write like wording of what he thought should go in the dialogue. Like he was yeah. doing essentially yeah. everything. Yeah. Yeah. But then Stan would get it, go through afterwards, and just dialogue everything. Oh, I'm sure. And that, but that's the Marvel method, is what they would do is they would have the artist essentially draw and paste the entire story. Yeah. And all the writers would do is go in and fill in the speech bubbles afterwards. Okay. Huh, so really, yeah. Wow. So th there, there's a lot of really cool That's stuff that amazing. we can get to. Yeah, I would love to see, like, I, I know you've told me to get that book and read. It's uh, what's it called? The one about comic books. I don't know. There's a lot of them. Well, I you, have a lot you of gave them. me one, and I think I put it on my Kindle and just oh, never read it. Oh, the Slugfest yeah, one. Yeah. Yes, yeah. that one was really good. But that one's about. The battle between Marvel and DC. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. Some of it's covered. Uh, like it does bring up. Like Jack Kirby and Stanley stuff in there too. Yeah, I want to say that I've watched some sort of documentary. It may have been a TV thing um, on the Stanley thing, but I don't, I, I can't remember much about it. You know what I mean? Just the fact that they didn't well, get along. And yeah, left but and I mean, and there's stuff. also things like I say all this, and it's not like I still don't think that at times Stanley could have, you know, a good heart and be a good sure, person. Sure. Where he's great, just like everybody else. And at times, I honestly did kind of, in the books that I've read and stuff, felt sad just because he was this giant icon mm. in this world that his, it seemed like his family didn't necessarily care about. Yeah. And it's so like, that's got to be a weird thing to deal with, too. But, you know, but, when you think about it, one, I mean, he had to take it on his back and make it bigger. You know, I mean, that was just, it, it, it probably needed one true leader kind of thing. You know, somebody to make decisions, even if they were bad. Yeah, true. And there's so many things. Well, and that's the thing, too, is how much of it that he wasn't involved in, yeah. that his name was just on. Yeah, for, that's true. He did. He, yeah. he I'm going to get the year wrong, but I'm pretty close. I feel like he did not write a comic after 1967. Wow. But it always said Stanley presents all the way up sure. until the 2000s. Sure. He was he would then write the newspaper, um, I did air quotes the newspaper, <laughs> uh, like strips that they would do. Yeah, he wrote that into the seventies. Mm. But then Roy Tom Roy Thomas took over as the ghost writer from the seventies until it ended in the early two thousands, and it still said written by Stanley. Wow. So there's things like it that. Said that written are just, by Stanley or are presented by well. I'm gonna have to go back and double check. Because I'm guessing that. that's two different things. It know? is. Yeah. Well, the the presented by in the comics it's like was being just an to make executive it. producer. You know, I mean, what the hell are you doing? You're, you're anyway, standing around. There's just a lot of stuff there that I think could sure. be fun to cover. Yeah, that would. And be then fun. also getting into the well, shit, story itself, which that. is great. Why don't you and I cover the whole thing? That's. I mean, uh, if there's yeah, is that what we're doing? Yeah, that's what oh, we're gonna great. dive okay. into. Enjoyed though. that story. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just letting you know that is cool. I would love to. We are about to embark on. At least, if anything, I think that for us to be, I want to get to a place where when I dive into actually talking about Mr. Miracle, we can go at it as a place because this is super yeah. nerdy of me. Yeah. But we can go at it to a place to where I feel like you at least under, oh, this sounds just so fucking nerdy for me to say, where you can understand kind of a little bit of the subtext underneath. And I think it'll just. What am know, I hearing? Was it me? Like, no, it sounded like. I'm like I don't know. All the birds are flying away, too. Is that a bad sign? I don't know. It sounded like either there's music or there's something going on down down on the street. 
again, we're on the 21st floor, and so we overlook all this <laughs> stuff. Wow, that's nice. I died. I'm sorry. Those birds are freaking me out, though. There's Which like one? this giant flock of birds. Oh, that right over there. Taking off and coming back and taking. Oh, there's some down here too. Yeah. Oh, oh I just see this. What is happening? Those. Oh, hold on. This is a live look. We're in a we're in an Alfred Hitchcock movie. We are. Um, we're gonna go check and make sure that. Yeah. We uh, gotta go look at these birds. All right, we'll be right back, and we're gonna dive into Wonder Woman and the Tasmanian Devil. After Enjoy this. this break. Brought to you by Push Soda. Peach. Welcome back. Thanks, Pish. Push, 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 We were discussing how we don't think the windows up here double paned on the Yeah, they're not double paned, and we were we were debating as to the best way to get the windows open, and then I said, well, a rock. Yeah, but that came far too late in the conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were talking about power tools and the whole thing. Yeah. It's like, throw a chair through it. Speaking of absolute chaos. Do you think a chair would just bounce off the window? I don't know. What movie is it where that happens? Yeah, where like somebody tries to, like yeah. tries to break um, the window and it just bounces. It off. depends on what type of chair. If it's like one of those flimsy plastic ones, maybe. Well, I'm thinking one of these, and it would have to. This be, has a little bit of like it has a little heft to it at yeah. the bottom. Yeah, I think you would have to use just the like me. It yeah, has a that's heft it. To it. You got at it. the bottom. Yeah, that's written. That's in what my, uh, I was gonna say. That's what it's gonna say on my tombstone. That's what it says and in my yearbook. Like, oh, all right. <laughs> yeah, the same thing. Same joke. Just different places. That's right. Uh, all right, let's go ahead and dive into some chaos. Let's that is go. Wonder Woman and the Tasmanian Devil. Yeah. And it's very much the same setup like last week where the mm -hmm. first part is a longer story that's drawn in a more serious type tone. It's rated T. For, for, for uh, teen. Oh, I was going to say for Tammy. This is it's for Tammy. It's rated T for Tammy. Uh, but <laughs> so the first half and the longer portion of it is actually this more serious style. Yeah. And then we have the more kind of like cartoon There's style. There's a cartoony one. Like I will tell one. you, yeah. though. Uh, Wonder Woman looks like a badass on this cover. She I'm does. Tell you that. We're going to do it differently than we did last week, Although though. Her ass is hanging out. We are going to skip to uh -oh. the last one first just because I like to save the better for. Okay. Man. So we're going to do the cartoony one. We're going to do the cartoony yep, one gotcha. first. I will not look at this side. Because, well, no. all it is is you just have to see the setup here, mm -hmm. and it's essentially a retelling oh, wow. of the Trojan horse story. Yeah. Um, Trojan horse play. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, there are just a couple things that I want to bring up. Uh, if you know the story of how um, the Trojan horse was used, mm -hmm. then it's essentially – the same thing here, except it's given in like a sing songy, rhymy style yeah. with a bunch of Looney Tunes characters God, in there's place. There's a of, ton of characters in that. Yeah, in place of all the main. And the giant white horse, like the, like the, you, you know what that horse is from, right? It's the. Yeah, the Barbara Seville thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that opera one. Yeah. Yes, but uh, <laughs> the Trojan horse itself is the giant pink, yeah, like yeah. opera looking horse yeah. from one of the Looney Tunes. I will say there is a lot of great, obviously, just Looney Tune references in this. Sure. But, like, we see uh, Helen of Sparta is just presented as one, or Wonder Woman as Helen in this. Uh, Taz is Paris. Uh, Daffy Wait, is. Wait, Taz is who? Paris. Paris. A prince. From the word, like, this is the whole. Oh. Like, they actually have the characters oh, okay. from I got you, got yeah, you, got yeah, the you. story. Okay, okay. Daffy is, uh, I'm going to butcher names, always do. King uh, Menelaus. Menelaus. M E N E L A U S. M yeah, Menelaus, I guess. Uh, but then also. Of course, I also put out a, a thing this week, uh, an episode of Found Sound this week, and it said uh, tiptoe through the T I T H E R S. Wait, wait, one more time T I T H E R S. The word is tithers. Right, because it's this guy in a church singing Tip about giving your the yeah, giving your giving your tithe. Yeah. Right, I read it probably twenty times. Tiptoe through the tithers, <laughs> like even when I recorded it, I was like, "All right, here we go." Tiptoe through the tithers. So people out there just think I'm a freaking idiot, but I just left it alone. I don't care. Yeah, no, fair Whatever. enough. Tithers. Yeah, they're gonna make fun. I'm no, I'm mispronouncing yeah, that. But like, cares. Yosemite Sam is Achilles or Achilles. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. 
uh, Wiley Coyote is Odysseus. Oh. Like we have, you know, just all yeah. these things, but they just retell the tale of the Trojan horse. Hey, Jack. Um, the things that are brought up that I just found weird about this whole thing mm-hmm. is a line that I never thought I would see is uh, Daffy Duck, because in the story, Helen is, you know, kidnapped and they're all back to go save Helen or Troy. Right, sure. Um, well, Taz has Helen here in this story. <laughs> I say, yeah, sure. Like, yeah. It's a, yeah. And yeah, Daffy yeah. as the king wanting to send them out to go get his wife. Yeah. His quote though is I'm a cuckold duckold. Oh no. Yeah. Daffy duck. Oh, that's not great. Daffy duck guys. Uh, that is not something I knew about his I'm character. I'm a cuckold, a duckold. Help me get my, get back my life. Cause it's sing song. I'm sorry. Yeah. The, the first part was. Why do you mean he took off with your wife? I'm a cuckold, a duckhold. Help me get back it my life. It means exactly what, yeah, it's not, yeah. And declare, man, dear brother, we'll whoop him and then some. We'll fetch back your bride. So swears Armageddon. And that's uh, Froghorn uh, Leghorn. Foghorn Leghorn, yeah. Um, okay. But essentially. Fascinating. We get to the part of where everybody's inside the Trojan horse. Well, they are, too. They're packed. And it's taken inside the city walls. Mm -hmm. But, you know, Wonder Woman's like, because it starts out as like Wonder Woman singing a song to Taz while he sleeps. And she's like, all right, well, this is where it ends. Sadly, like, you know. Right, sure. And he's like, nope, this is my dream. This is what happens. And in his dream, he just eats the Trojan horse and scares everybody off. And that's the end. Perfect. So Yeah, that's... I mean, it was it was it is what it is. It is. I mean, it's like it was very no no, but it was very clever. Um, I appreciated all the references to the actual you know. Yeah. I'm not taking away from it. I just think that the other story is just going to be a little more juicier for us to dive into. Sure, sure, sure. Because we have also the alternate cover, which Mm -hmm. is also cartoony, which I thought was really good. Glad they didn't do that uh, alternate cover. Yeah, that's fine. It's just. It's still a little goofy. Well, I mean, but it fits the theme yeah, of I where like so. it did last. Because right. yeah. we had yeah. the serious with Batman yeah. last week. Okay. So we start off our journey with Wonder Woman traveling through the art. jungles of Tasmania. It is very good. Yeah, art. it's gorgeous. Um, and while she's going through, uh, I should say, I'm sorry, I'm just looking at all the names on the covers to make sure. Yeah, you're good. Bettered, Kitson, Caldwell, Floyd, and Kozlowski, Skipiki, Kinzierski. Okay. All workers on this, and mm-hmm. you're right. The art uh, is gorgeous, and I did enjoy this first story. I enjoyed both stories, uh-huh. but I just think this one's going to be a little bit better for us. We go into, again, Wonder Woman's out in Tasmania, and she's searching for something. Sure. And what we find is she comes across exactly what she's looking for, mm. and it's drawn in a really great way, and it's this giant kind of just shadowy beast yeah. off in the distance. And we can see the little hair horns. Yeah. Uh, and so you kind of know it's Taz already. And the eyes. And the yeah. eyes. But it's drawn more in a serious style to look yeah. like an actual beast. Yeah. And uh, I love the title of, oh, there we go, of The Devil You Know. Uh-huh. Tony Bedard's the writer. Barry Kitson Penciler. John Floyd Inker. Uh, Laverne Kandinsky, colorist, and Dave Sharp, letterist. So, okay. oh, Jim Lee did the cover, too. Oh, so there, there you go. go. That's why it looks the way it does. Um. But we are also greeted with a speech bubble from Wonder Woman saying, hello again, remember me? Mm. Because I sure remember you, teasing that at some point in time. They've already met. Exactly. Yeah. So we get kind of like a throwback then from years ago of where Wonder Woman explains. Uh, and Themyscira, which is where all the Amazons live, mm-hmm. uh, her mother is the ruler of Themyscira. Yeah. So Diana is her daughter. Look at her running around with that uh, half horse, half man. Minotaur. There we go. Right. Yeah. Centaur. Centaur. What's a minotaur? What's the difference? Oh, oh, oh! Google. Oh, is minotaur centaur. is bull. They're they're both in here. Human. That is a centaur. Yeah. Centaur, centaur is horse human. So centaur. Centaur. Or centaur. The. No, it's a scyther. You're thinking of. Well, no. What's the it's the called centaur? A scyther. Isn't that like a guitar? No, I thought it was called a scyther. We're off the rails. Let's go back. Know. So she's with the centaur here, uh, but never. She's Who's playing a scyther. <laughs> she's going back, explaining all the trials that she had to put herself through as yeah. being one of the, you know, first children of the mascara and however long. Mascara? Uh, the mascara. The mas- Oh, oh, okay. The okay, town, okay, yeah. okay, okay. Um, I thought you were saying the mascara. I was no, like, okay. The mascara. 
Brought to you by CoverGirl. <laughs> but, and she explains all the different trials that she went through to prove, you know, just how worthy she was yeah. of being yeah. the, uh, essentially the queen's daughter in a way. Show. Uh, and she's fighting all these, you know, weird mythical creatures. Eventually she decides, Those all right. They're kind of cool looking. Oh, they are. Yeah. Uh, I have to kind of show that I've tussled with a great beast to let them know that, all right, I essentially for sure mean business. Like, sure. you know. Um, so she goes into these uh, crypts in a way, or a uh, labyrinth, if you will. Labyrinth. And what she talks about is how once long ago, uh, I can't, does it say the guy's name? Um, Jeff. And I can't remember. Yeah, we'll just say Jeff. Jeff. Had to go before and uh, battle and defeat the Minotaur. Okay. That lived, you know, there in the labyrinth. She didn't want to tussle with a creature as just as, you know, dangerous as that. But she knew that there were other great beasts here in this labyrinth that yeah. she could kind of prove herself against, go back to the people. Okay. While she's there in the labyrinth, because not only is it this giant maze, but it has portals to other places in there. So think of this giant, I guess... Like the runaway, what's the roller coaster that's in the dark at Six Flags? The runaway mine train. Is that really? Yeah. That's Okay. Mm -hmm. So just like think of that, except you can like go to other portals mm -hmm. in there too, I guess. Um, but while she's in the labyrinth, she is spotted by these skeleton soldiers who chase after her as she dives through one of the portals. Uh, by the way, this is a young... I would say, yeah, yeah. You know, she's in she's late teens, early twenties yes, type. Yes, very much. Diane now, here. I, as an aside, skeleton warriors have never scared me. Like they seem yeah. very easy to defeat. They do, you know, in like Jason and the Argonauts, uh, um, uh, Evil Dead Three, Army of Darkness. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, they're just so easy to defeat. Because no. it's just bones. Yeah, no, you're right. It is. It's so, just bones. I don't know. I guess it's the sheer number of them usually. I think that's right? too. Maybe yeah. they can just overwhelm you because yeah. it's so much. Yeah. Uh, but she, they like chase. toddlers. <laughs> exactly. You get a bunch of toddlers. Like, like that, that question about one giant duck or like yes, seven Yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, but she dives through a portal and they wind up in this jungle. She doesn't know where they are. But the yeah, skeletons. Yeah, see, look at them. They're starting to multiply. Yeah, and the skeletons who all hop out are like. The flesh, the flesh, because that's what they call her when they're chasing her down. I was hoping you would do a voice. Thank you. That's great. Uh, and one of them, I'm glad to know that you hope I No, seriously, it. because you didn't, I was going to. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah. one of them, the one who's yelling, has his voice covered by one of the other skeletons, and he's like, quiet. And they just kind of leave. See, again, they that kind of stuff makes no sense to me. It, it, one skeleton puts his bony hand <laughs> over another skeleton's face to keep him quiet. That's, what is that doing? It's, it's not doing anything. Here's the thing. it's Some of that's just learned behavior from when you had flesh still. Okay. Um, but they're kind of scared, and they're how like, are, forget they it. Speak? I don't know. Okay. But they're like, forget it. Let's, let's just go back. <laughs> and they leave. And she's like, all right, I don't know what's up here, but I do know that there's got to be some kind of beast out here. Then. Sure. I'll just go ahead and tussle with them. And while she's out <laughs> there. Just go ahead and tussle <laughs> with them. It doesn't say that. That's just how sure, I'm you know, sure. TLDRing it. <laughs> but there's just like a cyclone of just kind of wind all around yeah. her. And then all of a sudden, <sighs> she's met face to face dun, 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 dun. with the Tasmanian devil. I love how when he speaks, it's just pictures. That's fantastic. But it's not out loud. Yeah. She can just understand him. Oh, okay. That's all we come to find out because we see after the their face to face, we see all these speech bubbles that are just yeah. pictures, no words. And then. But she hey. walks up to him, and she goes, really now? I'm surprised you'd even bother to cook me. Yeah, because like she's on a, on a spit, and then he's got her on a plate, and then with an apple in her mouth. Isn't this oddly, thing. just hear me out, though, isn't that oddly kind of sexual in a way? Yeah, well, it looks like a ball gag, yeah. Yeah, anyway. Yeah, looks a little so, ball gaggy. Maybe that's why it's teen. It could be, yeah. <laughs> right there. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> but Taz is shocked because... How can anybody understand his gibberish and all the sounds that he's making? Yeah, sure. And she just tells him, like, hey, like, it's okay. I can understand you. I Don't worry. If you just eat me now, that's one meal. But I can hunt you so much and teach you how to. Like, sure. she's trying to get her way out of it now that she's face-to-face -face with this guy. Yeah. And she's Give like, a Taz a fish. Teach a Taz Exactly. A fish. And she's like, all right, I'll go get you some food to get away. And Taz does his signature kind of spin. Mm -hmm. And, like, just barricades around her. Yeah, exactly. Of, like, no, you're not going anywhere. Yeah. Like, he's on to her. So, instead, she reaches in her bag and realizes, and this is also from the Looney Tunes, which I did enjoy, that 
while he's so riled up, she pulls out her harp and she starts playing music. Because mm-hmm. how do you always soothe Taz? Music soothes the savage the be- beast. Exactly. Yeah. It, this and, and him with the sounds and all that kind of stuff, it always reminds me how great Mel Blanc was. Yes. You know, I mean, he was yes. just a genius you know he was allergic to carrots right was he really but yet oh, he I would still he would take before. a bite of an yeah, actual and carrot spit and spit it out because yeah. Yeah. nothing else makes sense i think we've had that joke yeah. before I, why not an apple because yeah. yes we have because then we've gone into all of the yeah, like what is that gri- not cares? grip work what's it called um uh foley yeah yeah of like everything grift in work gra- <laughs> <laughs> what's the sound <laughs> of picking somebody's pocket <laughs> hold on you ready yeah that's there it. You go. That's it. Yeah, you did it. So silent. <laughs> um, wow. <laughs> so silent. <laughs> anyway, so she soothes him, puts him to sleep, and while he's asleep, she cuts off one of his hair horns. Oh no! To take it as like her, hey, yeah. I sued the savage yeah. beast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we flash back to current day, and she's like, "I see your hair horn grow grew back. Good to see," kind of thing. Yeah. And he's very upset now to see her again. Uh-huh. And he, she's like, I've come to apologize. I need your help with something. And we're then shown why she needs her help. Apparently, a couple days before, uh, Diana's mom, or Wonder Woman's mom, has invited her there to take over as the new ruler of Themyscira. While she's there in, all, in front of all of her sisters to announce this, uh, Cersei, with an army of trolls, mm. not Game of Thrones Cersei, but still just as evil yeah, and yeah. has magic Cersei, uh, with an army of trolls, attacks... Uh, all of them there, but she also has this pennant or, or tra- talisman. Sorry, yeah, it's like a talisman of Urel, which mm-hmm. has the face of Medusa on it. Mm-hmm. And just as you would think, it turns everybody to stone, right? So Wonder Woman is trying to get out of her way, running back to escape through the labyrinth that she went in, or you know, we okay. where she went to go see Taz before. She's trying to get away from everybody before. They're all turned into stone. She escapes, but Cersei wants her hunted down because obviously it's not done until we have them all. Yeah. Kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She says, bring me the head of Wonder Woman. Exactly. Basically, yeah. That's who she wants. She doesn't right. want any of the others to be touched. Right. She wants to show Wonder Woman what all she's done and then kind of crush Wonder Woman. Okay. That's Cersei in a nutshell. So um, Wonder Woman explains this story to Taz, and then Taz realizes, oh, I know what you need help with. Whatever the talisman that the – minotaur that we talked about from the beginning has and she's like exactly i need your help with that and i promise that you know i'm not here to mess with you like i need that and she wraps the rope around herself to show him like the truth exactly Mm -hmm. so he just kind of nods and he's like tells her that i'll help yeah i'll help her and they go through all these different dimensions and have to battle a bunch of different things. There's like yeah. a giant ice creature. Uh-huh. They have to crawl through the desert. Uh-huh. It's like, I'm, I'm sure there's some yetis up there probably. Sure. <laughs> um, but eventually, oh. they come to a place where there's a set of armor. Yeah. And Taz explains that the armor's for him through his pictures because mm. that's how she understands her. Uh, because he's going to help her fight the Minotaur to get the amulet. Mm-hmm. Uh, he then takes, this is the only time he talks. Yeah. That's what I was wondering. I mean, he takes the rope himself oh. and puts it on his hands. So wonder woman can understand him better to tell her that he's not upset that she tricked him. Uh-huh. She's just, uh, or he's upset that she just took the, took music, the music away. away. Yeah. Okay. Which is very, well, makes sense. It, it's kind of very on brand for Taz yeah. too. Yeah. So he's like, I'm going to help you. There's a bit of humor coming up. They finally get to this one portal to get to the main part of the center of the labyrinth, if Uh you will, of where the Minotaur is. Right before they go in to see them, Taz basically tells Wonder Woman, yep, Taz is going to his grave. Yeah, it's like a little picture of him jumping (laughs) Jumping into his grave. grave. And she's like, don't joke like that. But it's kind of funny. Uh, But then we see this Minotaur is just absolutely a beast. He does. And his first things are, I smell an old friend. And a stranger, mm. and another. I love the way that they did these bigger panels because yeah, it very makes nice. that it goes across two pages, pages the, the, at the very top. Exactly, the yeah. action shots look really very great. Very cool. And uh, he says, "Taz I do, is tiny compared to him." Ex- both of them are. Yeah. That, and you really get to see just how massive this Minotaur yeah. is. Yeah. And he tells them that I don't suffer strangers here, and he just kind of like knocks Taz off. Sure. And he's about to kill Wonder Woman, um, because he goes, "Devil, why did you bring this Amazon?" 
to the heart of our domain, why side with her against your own kind? Like, he's like, why are you helping her kind of thing? What powers does a minotaur tar have? It's whatever this amulet is. Oh, okay. It doesn't go into okay. it. He's, well, I just, he's I, strong I, as hell. I, yeah, I, I think guess. that's all it is, right? They're just super strong, right? Yeah. Huh. Uh, he does say, I shall Seems shatter. Seems like a waste of the red eyes. But. Yeah. He claims that he's that she's bewitched Taz mm. and that he's going to shatter her hold on him and that she is going to die. Okay. And it causes Taz to realize, obviously, he cares about Wonder mm-hmm. Woman a lot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he gets into his cyclone mode and he bounces like a pinball because there's no better way to describe no, it was he perfect, does yeah. off of each kind of pillar like a baby around blade. exactly <laughs> great he does he looks <laughs> just like a baby uh against all the pillars as it crashes down on top of the minotaur yeah so okay. and while doing so they don't defeat him but they in, in, incapacitate him like in prison him yeah yeah, yeah. for a moment and wonder sure. woman's able to steal the talisman <laughs> from them and they go back to themiscara while they're there uh, or once they get back there, Cersei is still telling them, like, we got to find Wonder Woman. She's got to be out here when they both arrive. Cersei looks a lot like Scarlet Witch. She does. Um, and Cersei tells them, to, like, go ahead and, you know, the devil. Or they always call, call him the devil when they yeah, talk sure, about Tazzle's sure, school. Sure, sure. Like, she essentially is like, he's so clumsy. Like, how is he going to help you with all your sister's stone? You know, and, and woman's just, our Wonder Woman, Wonder Woman's just like. Oh, woman. Oh, woman. Wonder Woman's just like, they don't know you like I do. Just go ahead and give me some, give me some time. And he does kind of sacrifice himself to the trolls because they all kind of gang up on him mm-hmm. while she goes away and flings Cersei back into the labyrinth. Oh. And she snatches off the oh, Medusa yeah, pendant as she goes it. in. Yeah. And Cersei is met with the Minotaur. Oh. And that is where Cersei ends. Yeah. Wonder Woman turns everybody back from stone. Uh, they defeat the, the troll the, army. With the amulet. With the amulet. Yeah. They defeat the troll army. And then to make up for it, or to uh, as a thank you gift for Taz, they provide <laughs> this great feast. Big buffet. For all of them to eat. Yeah. And the queen asks, uh, does, uh, or yeah, so does this meet your approval, uh, Taz? And we get a picture again, and it's him eating like a chicken yeah, leg yeah. with all the Amazons just standing far off in the background. Sure. And it has him pinball around the table again. Nom, 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 and, nom, 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 and Diana just ends with, he said it's fine. Now what are you going to eat? And that's where it ends. Uh, Ta-da. That's a, good, that's a decent little story, though. Yeah, it was cute. I do want to go back to one thing here go where ahead. Cersei turns one of the trolls into a chicken. She does because yeah. he can't find... Uh, Wonder Woman, or he did something, I don't remember. Maybe she run, maybe she's scared. No, Diana of Themyscira is many things, but she is not a coward. She is not a, well, you know, and then poof, she turns yeah. one of the guys into a chicken. Chicken. Huh. Yep. Yeah, that's not the best joke, but it's fine. It works still. This is cool, though. I mean, it's really well done. Um, I mean, it's obviously a cash grab kind of thing but, but still it was but fun. it's a one-off it's not like they tried to continue it no no yeah. that's true i enjoyed it for what it was also yeah. uh i had the idea of us doing this whole deep dive thing like halfway through the week and i realized it's not enough time for me to prepare an episode sure. yeah so i needed to find something so i thought no, it was good. perfect yeah i enjoyed great. it and uh i have had a lot of fun with the uh, dc looney tunes things i'll bring in uh the joker daffy little yeah i'd love to there. see that one then be um cool. but there you go so that is what we had this week as always uh, thank you for taking the time out of your day to listen. Mm. We are not the only podcast, though. We are a part of a great family of other podcasts on Rogue, or, uh, uh, as a part of, if I could talk, Rogue Media Network. RogueMediaNetwork.com. Um, so tons and tons and tons of great stuff out there. Mike, yeah. anything else before? Um, I think that's Your it. Your Squishmallow over here? Yeah, I think that's it. Does he it. have a name? Uh, oh, he ch- does, ch- yeah. Ch- ch- Chienda. Or is it a chine, chine da, I don't know, man. Okay, sorry. C H I E N D A. Chienda. Chienda. That's God bless you. <laughs> um, no, uh, we're uh, we're just uh, yeah, we keep going. You know, we, we're putting out more shows. We're developing new stuff. We've got a bunch of new new folks on board. Uh, got a sales manager this week, Ooh. so pretty pretty excited things, about that. Big things happening. Yeah, yeah, it was good. After getting back from Denver, there was a lot to dive into. Well, so. That's good. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Um, I was trying to think. Th- there's there's a couple of shows that I'm working on now that are all 
uh, and please, people, don't kill me, but they're all chat GPT generated. Oh, we talked about some of those yeah, last week. Like yeah, I think those will be fun. Right. Um, yeah, anytime you can get a robot to do your work. Oh, yeah, for sure. Well, that's how it's going to be eventually. Anyway, sure. I, for one, welcome our new robot overlords. I do as well. I'm going to go to work for um, Spacely Sprockets. <laughs> Jetson? <laughs> Jetson! That's way better than mine. Uh, all Wasn't right. that Blanc also? Was it? I want to I want to say that he did his voice. I don't know. We'll figure that out for next yeah, week. Yeah, we'll figure it out next week. All right. As always, thank you guys and until next time, stay safe everybody. Golly con. Frozen. Frozen. Heroes. Gonna tell you about Frozen, Frozen, Heroes, gonna tell you about. This is a Rogue Media Network podcast.